Okay. So I'm going to make a 12 weeks to peak video today. Yeah. Um, I got a couple minutes unexpectedly between calls. I have a super full schedule today, uh, as with many days, but uh, we're recording for the Cold Star Project today with Wes Schaefer about the 12 weeks to peak program. Um, if you're not in this free accountability program for business owners and salespeople, why not <laughs> get over there? <laughs> so what triggered today's idea, and I got triggered a lot, um, is I was talking to uh, a prospective client for an agency program that I'm involved in, and uh, we really got into prospecting. Like she, she shared with me that she really didn't know how to start that outreach. And so I want to go back to the basics. Um, I've kind of covered this early on, like 70 days ago or something like that in this program, but I haven't actually talked about it in this way. Okay. Um, it, and it's about the approach to uh, prospecting. Okay. This is always a good reminder anyway, right? There are a lot of people out there who are doing prospecting in a very bullish manner, right? Bull in a China shop, shoving their way in, you know, and uh, hey, <laughs> buy my stuff, right? And is that how human interaction works? You know, I learned a lot from Tyron Giuliani, uh, just watching him and his program about like the rhythm <clears throat> of a conversation and how a conversation starts. You don't just walk over to somebody and go, hi, my name's Jason Canning and I'm the best, best thing ever. And then like give them your resume and then conclude with, and I've got this thing and you should buy my stuff. <laughs> five minutes into the conversation. Like, whoa, I, I was about to say five minutes into the conversation. That's not a conversation. That's that's a rant, right? Uh, no, that's not how things work. And we wouldn't expect that to work. So why are people teaching this and automating it? <laughs> right? Folks, automating is the last thing you do. You don't jump to automation at the beginning. This is the foolish internet marketing mind, right? That comes up with this. Let's automate junk, right? Garbage in, garbage out. Computers are great, but they're not very original. And they just do what you tell them to do, right? They're like the ancient gods, as somebody called it. Uh, maybe Arthur Clarke, somebody like that a long time ago, right? They're very unforgiving. Um, so the last thing you want to do is automate. Get in there, start having real conversations with people first. Well, Jason, I don't know how to start a conversation. Good. Okay, well, you kind of do, right? But here's what I've learned, okay? I'm going to share my approach to getting people to come on my show. Now, you might think this is easy, right? Especially if you're from that internet marketing world where people are on the interview circuit, right? And they're looking for places to be interviewed at. And they're delivering the same boring interview over and over and over again. Same questions, same answers, different hosts, right? Boring. Okay. I got out of my sales training business in 2015 because I was sick and tired of doing interviews like that. I didn't want to do it, okay? The people who I go and find for interviewing, space and defense officials, military officers and uh come on brain um subject matter experts right academics and technical folks and that most of those people who i have on my show have never been interviewed before okay many of them some of them have been interviewed a couple times but they're certainly not on some sort of interview circuit and so jason has to make a sale to get those folks to come on my show <laughs> okay understand this Having a show is a mouth to feed. It is not easy. It requires persistent effort. And I'm at four years in, 225 plus episodes. Okay. I've learned a lot. And in the beginning, I would email people. Uh, and LinkedIn outreach was my best, you know, way of doing this, right? Um, just as good as referrals, actually. Just cold LinkedIn outreach. Connect. Make sure they, they actually operate on the platform, not just have a profile, but never log in, right? They got to be there. And I would message them a while after I connected. This is something really to understand. People jump in, they connect, and they immediately go, here's my message, right? No. If you do that, you look like every other direct messaging fool who's out there trying to turn somebody into a customer okay maybe you don't have to wait maybe you do it your way this is the way that i do it i found it very effective okay so i send the connection request i don't send a message with it uh, i let my headline and the mutual connections and my photo do the talking okay and nearly all the time that works that works just fine so 
oh, I just got a message from the prospect who <laughs> didn't show up to the call that let me do this message saying he's late. Could I pick, you know, 10 o'clock? No, no, my day is full now. <laughs> no, you're back of the line, pal. Um, <laughs> it's just I care about these people when I help them. Sometimes they really think you're sitting around doing nothing. Okay. So you get in there and you, you connect and they accept and do not message them right away. I don't because I don't want to look like a direct marketer trying to get in there and, and yell at them to buy my stuff. Okay. I wait a couple of business days. So if it's over the weekend, that's fine. If I connect on Friday, I can message on Monday. That's fine. But there has to be a gap of at least a day, at least a full day. Okay. So that they don't see me as just some gorilla trying to break into the bamboo hut and take stuff. Okay. Pillage. We're not, we're not about that. So <clears throat> what do we do after we've got that connection? <clears throat> we waited a day and now we're going to start a conversation. So again, this is what I do for getting these very timid guests. They're not, a lot of them don't want to be an interview guest. Okay. Well, I begin with, Hey, great to connect. I say something short about them, why I was interested in connecting with them. And then I ask a question. Okay. And this is, you know, again, Tyron Giuliani kind of format, right? How to start a conversation. It's very short. I do not send, hey, I'm Jason Kennegan. I have the show, The Cold Star Project. You should be on it. I really want you to be on it. Here's why. Here's the previous episodes of the show and the links and then my booking link. And why don't you do that? Okay. That gray potato smear is, as we called it in college back in the 90s, <laughs> bad communication, right? Of text. <clears throat> Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to read it. it. It's not a value bomb. It's not. Your value bombs are not value bombs. <laughs> You know, if you're going to do that, ask them if they want it first, ask them if it would be relevant to them first. And then when they say yes, give it to them. Okay. That's an idea of how you can transform what I'm saying here into something like that for marketing. Okay. So I'd ask the question, here's how it goes. Okay. If it's a woman, uh, they generally feelers, right? So I would say, uh, how do you feel about the idea of being an interview guest on a show? Okay. If it's a man, man, you know, this is Myers-Briggs stuff, right? Men think more uh more often as preferences right here if, if you know the mbti types right this is what i'm talking about uh what do you think about the idea of being an interview guest on a show and i leave it there i don't explain who i am what i want what the show is about nothing okay and i ask that simple question and i'm out of there okay one time in 10 maybe i don't get an answer that's fine one time in 50 or so i'll get a no thanks and that's not about me, right? They don't know me. They don't know anything about my show, nothing. They're just not comfortable with the idea. Okay. And then the rest of the time, they're like, wait, what? what? Tell me more, <laughs> right? I'm intrigued. <laughs> give me more details, right? Oh, now you've opened the door and let me give you the gray potato smear of who I am, what I want, et cetera, right? But I'm still going to dole that out in shorter chunks, Okay. And then give them the call to action at the end. And I'm going to try and hold their hand through it. But <clears throat> I'm going to try and have an exchange while giving them that information, not just data dump. Here you go. Right. But at least I've asked them to open the door, whether they're interested in this at all, and then giving them this stuff. Right. At that point, they might say, hey, yeah, let's take it to email. Email me here. Or they will pick a time. Or, or I could ask them. Would you like me to send the information about the show to you by email or here in LinkedIn Messenger and then do that, right? And this stuff, oh, Jason, it's you're slowing down, right? It takes so long to do this. Yeah, but I get results. <laughs> Slow down to speed up, right? Chunk it up to speed up. Take your time. Yeah, it takes another half an hour where you have to wait for them to get back to you, okay? But the door is open and then I get booked. I get to DARPA program managers this way. Approach them on LinkedIn, we move to email. Often, they can't do an interview with me because they're still behind the national security firewall, right? They, they, can't, they can't talk about what they're working on yet. But I'm lined up for two years later. <laughs> I'm going to be around, right, for when they're out of that role and they're no longer a director of something and a program manager, and now they're free to talk about some things, right? So this has happened. Um, so again, how could you adapt this? to your process right don't go in there guns blazing 
connect with your target market? Yes, but then leave that short pause so that they understand you're not the orangutan leaping into the room, flinging feces around to try and get attention, okay? Because that's the way they see you. Do you understand that? When you when you misbehave the bad way, right? That's what you look like to me, right? Yeah. I'm in your DMs, yeah. throwing crap. Right? Get out of here, right? I want to hit the button and, and do the nerve knockout gas, knock you out right in there, take him away, you know? That's what you're perceived like, okay? It makes me sick. I don't want to be perceived that way. So wait a little bit. Then short introduction. Hey, great to connect. Here's why I wanted to connect. And then a question, right? And for you, that could be something about whether they're interested in the topic of your white paper or something like that, or your report, the content that you want to give them, right? Um, could be a video series, could be a paper, could be something else, right? Um but don't leap into the data dump, the value bomb that you think is so valuable. It's it's so relative. Value of information is so relative, right? <laughs> so just because you think it's important doesn't mean anybody else does, right? You got to get their permission first. All right, I got to get back on these calls. I'm going to be recording with Wes later. So look for that in early January. And uh I got to kick off the new year with Nick Shalan, the, the past chief software officer of the Air Force and Space Force of the United States, which we already recorded last week. Um, but Wes will be right after that. And get into that 12 weeks to we peak, 12 weeks to peak, say that five times fast, uh, program. It's been very helpful for me. I'm sure I doubled my revenue over the last three months because of it, because I was doing things like this video, like the activities inside, which are, again, it's like going to the gym and working out a little bit, right? Um, it's nothing mind or body breaking, <laughs> but it's stuff you should be doing, right? A, a founder or a salesperson who sits at home waiting for people to come to him or her is going to be very poor. That's, that's the fact of the matter. You do have to make some noise. I have no problem <laughs> selling, going for the clothes, going for the money, right? Um, but there are ways to be polite about it to be respectful to be appreciated to be understood to be treated like another human being uh, and have a much better time i was i was looking at a um an outreach screenshot that somebody had shared from a program where they were doing this thing with facebook messenger reaching out to like local companies <clears throat> and it was deceptive. They were starting off with something that made them look like they might be a customer. And then they were like, I couldn't find your website. And here's the flip, right? That I talk about, which I don't like, right? Where it flips from being uh, looking like an inquiry to now I'm going to try and pitch you something. And the other person's is like, what's this about? Do you have a project? And then they were like, F off, right? My way, you don't experience that kind of thing. People don't treat you that way. Okay, so you get to keep feeling good about yourself and it speeds up the process like that guy. Yeah, he got sped up to garbage to the dump. He got a crappy conversation real fast. Great. Burn through your leads and get 100 crappy conversations in a day. Good for you. Right. Jason will be busy over here having 20 really good conversations that actually go somewhere. <laughs> All right. I get the idea. Hopefully I got that across. I'll see you. Well, not tomorrow because it's Friday, but laters.